Hello everyone, Seraphin here. Welcome back for more Pokemon Soul Silver. When I last left you guys, we were getting our butts kicked in the Burned Tower, and I uh, figured it might be a good time to run back and get everything squared away and healed up before we progress any further. Uh, there is a great deal of stuff left to do in that Burned Tower. By a great deal, I mean there's just stuff for me to find. Uh, we have released the Legendary Beasts already, that being Entei, Raikou, and Suicune, so... Uh, as far as the plot is concerned, there's not much left to do down there. In fact, I think with the release of those three, we have now unlocked the ability to enter the Ekritik City Gym. Uh, with that being said, I don't think I'm ready for that gym yet, simply because I know what levels they're going to be in, uh, throwing at us and what kind of Pokemon we're in store for, and I'm just not prepared. So we're going to spend a little more time doing some training. Hopefully not too much longer. I'd like to get moved on here as quick as possible. This is, this I think, uh, Ecritique City in particular is, I'm not going to say a difficulty spike per se, but it is a kind of like a stopping point where you're like, okay, maybe I need to assess my situation and make sure I've got a decent team put together before I go any further. Uh, certainly Ecritique I think is the, the first point where that is the case. Uh, did I... Totally blanked and don't remember if I have strength on anybody. Oh, that's right, I have strength on Heracross now. And I do have Rock Smash with Wooper, so we can move a little way through here. Not this way, though. We actually need to go the other... No? What in the world? Oh, maybe we're going down the wrong ladder here. I believe there's another one up to the side over here. If I'm not mistaken. And actually, there's something I forgot to get while I was up here the first time. Behind a breakable rock, so to speak. So I'm hoping... Uh, Mr. Drowsy here is able to handle a couple more hits from these stupid coughings from now on. Considering he very nearly one-shot, well, I guess not very nearly, but he does two-shot them, so that's good. I'm hoping once he gets a few more levels, he'll be able to just simply one-shot them and won't have to worry about taking hits in the return. And of course, a single smoke screen is enough for me to never hit again. And there's poison gas, of course. Gotta love that. I love being poisoned. It is the best thing in this game. Would you stop with this? Okay, the fact that it goes from 100% accuracy to I can't hit the broadside of a barn with a single accuracy drop is absolutely ludicrous, and I am not a fan. Okay, this is just ridiculous. This is why accuracy drop and evasion is... Uh, well, not accuracy drop, but evasion is actually banned in a lot of competitive Pokemon formats, like using Double Team or Minimize to a certain extent, because you become effectively unhittable after a certain point. And it's just absolutely obnoxious and ridiculous. And you see, after one battle, I'm already below half health and poisoned, and yeah, great times. Uh, headbutt. Well, that's not super useful, but it's better than Pound, so we'll get rid of that. I don't know why Drowsy has a, a great deal of a focus on physical moves when it's clearly meant to be a special attacker, but maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about. So I don't think I have any antidotes left. I lied, I have two. So we're just going to pop one of those. I'm not going to bother healing him up to full. I don't want to waste a fresh water or a super potion or anything like that. So we're just going to progress onward for a little bit. Hopefully I can run into something else that doesn't outright murder me. Like this Zubat, for example, that probably has Bite. Uh, we'll, I guess we'll see how it goes. Nope, supersonic. Now again, I don't know if I'm capable of one-shotting this thing. Nope, not quite. I guess we'll risk it. And there's the supersonic. Awesome. Now, supersonic, on the other hand, has an abysmally low accuracy rate. Something like 55%. And thankfully we make it through. Although I don't know that this Zubat is going to be worth a great deal of experience. Considering it's, you know, a Zubat. Yeah, only 108. I'm going to go out on a limb and say those things really probably aren't worth fighting to that extent. Uh, I don't think I broke any of these down. You may be wondering, what are the heck are these rocks here for if they're not blocking anything? Well, I have a sneaking suspicion that there is something hidden here. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, well, this one definitely has something behind it. And it turns out there is no other ladder over here. At least, not that I... Did I completely walk past it and not realize? I don't know, let's go back and double check. Yeah, I guess there isn't a ladder over here. Is this the only one? This seems a little weird, doesn't it? Well, we'll have to go examine another method of getting down into the bottom of that tower. 
simply because there is goodies down there to be had, I know for a fact. Alright, so coughings it looks like are going to be a halfway decent source of experience for Drowsy here. Might need several of them for it to be really worth it, I suppose, but... We're just going to go ahead and knock another one of these down without too much effort, thankfully. We actually land a hit after smokescreen this time. Yeah, that's worth over twice as much experience for just as much effort when compared to a Zubat, so... That's going to be the going forward plan here, I think. And Rattatas, as we all know, are not worth anything as far as experience, really. They may as well be level 2 boars. If you understand that reference, good for you. Alright, come on with this nonsense. I swear to... Okay, good. Alright, now is the time for me to use a potion, I suppose. This is why I hate Rattatas. They're, they're fast enough that they're difficult to get away from. But they're not really worth staying and fighting half the time, because again, they don't really give you much in the way of experience. Good thing I bought all that water. Probably gonna need that for later, but let's take a look down here and see if I missed anything. I probably did. I know you can walk around this way, but I can't walk through those strength rocks. So I must be missing something. It's been a while since I've been down here. In, uh, in reality, that is. I haven't played this game in quite some time, so I'm not entirely remembering everything correctly. I actually remember the original gold and silver layout of Burton Tower better than I remember this one, which is kind of odd, but... Oh, good tackle. At least that's not going to do a whole heck of a lot. And opens up him being two-shot by confusion. Now, uh, I did take some time. I know I mentioned this a few episodes ago, but I take some time to look up um, learned movesets for a lot of my members of my team. And I'm happy to report that Vulpix actually has an incredibly good moveset, and I'm looking forward to using that. Uh, that being said... Wait a minute. Okay, I think I can progress through here, actually, if I just do this. How did I not miss this before? I feel silly now. So if I push this one first, I can just do that. There we go. Now, I know there's hidden items to be found down here in the basement. I have my dowsing machine I could potentially use for that. But I'm fairly certain I just know where most of them are. It's not like it's super difficult to figure out. Come on with this garbage. This is the one situation where Runaway is a halfway decent ability. It just guarantees you get away without having to worry about it. But it, because Runaway is utterly useless and competitive, what's the point? Uh, taunt. Well, there we go. That's an interesting move. I'm going to go run down to the other side of the bottom here. Go away. Of course there's rats in an abandoned tower. Why Why wouldn't there be? That's actually a really good, like, realistic thing, I suppose. Oh, that's going to suck. All right, don't you dare do that again. Why does everything no bite in this place? I don't know. Anyway, let's try the dowsing machine. Again, I haven't quite figured out what button this is. I probably should take the time to do that. But the nice thing about this is it allows you to kind of use the touch screen to detect where... Uh... Oh, I have a button I could just press on that too, I suppose. Instead of having to go into the bag every single time. Alright, this should be a level up for Drowsy, assuming he doesn't get wrecked in the process. So yeah, uh, the dowsing machine's very... I like the dowsing machine a lot when compared to the old school item finder. Just because the item finder was, oh, there's something in the area, but you still gotta go dig around for it. And it wasn't really all that specific as to where the thing that you were looking for was supposed to be located. The dowsing machine actually gives you a pretty good, pretty good understanding of where stuff is. Although I think they did improve upon the item finder formula in uh, the later games when compared to the original red and blue, yellow, and gold and silver. Like, in Fire Red and Leaf Green, I'm pretty sure the way it worked was it would give you a number of stars based on how close you were. There was something to that effect. Let me just press this button and turn it on. There we go. Okay, so there is something right on top of this rock here. A revive. Delightful. And I don't know if that was everything, but... I don't want to stick around too long. I got stuff to do, so... I think we're just going to move on for now. And I've already used strength. We can just push this rock out of the way. We've already released the beast. <laughs> released the beast. So, there really isn't much else to do down here, other than training Drowsy, I suppose. 
but again, given that Drowsy is incredibly vulnerable to everything in the Akritik City Gym, I don't know how useful he's going to be in there. I would prefer something that knew a good dark move and wasn't vulnerable to getting wrecked by ghost types. Uh, theoretically speaking, Ekans slash Arbok might be okay. Uh, I don't know if Morty's Gengar knows any psychic type moves. Although I'm fairly certain at least one of his Pokemon has the Hypnosis Dream Eater combo. And that is a psychic type move, and that will utterly decimate uh, Ekans Arbok if we bring him in there. So, gonna need to be careful of that. I'm trying to think of what else I could potentially use as a linchpin against Morty's team. But unfortunately, there isn't a whole great deal of good options in that regard. Would you get out of my way? Uh, in the original red, uh, gold, and silver, rather, you could just simply bring a Graveler in there with magnitude and wreck everything because they're all part poison type. But sadly, all of the Ghastly Haunter Gengar line in this generation has Levitate and therefore is immune to ground types. And also, back in the day, uh, ghost type moves were physical and therefore a Graveler could tank them fairly well. But nowadays, they are special. Well, Shadow Ball at any rate is special and goes off of Gengar's absurdly high special attack. And so, once again, Graveler not a great choice with his pathetic special defense. So we're actually going to go head out this direction. There is a fair number of trainers out this way that we can use to gain some extra experience. I would like to mainline Vulpix for the time being, simply because I know it learns a, f a really good Fire-type move very soon. And I would like to make that happen, because a good Vulpix is going to be an absolutely essential part of this team, I think. Uh, it does learn a good Psychic-type move later on, too, but like in the 40s. So it's not something we can rely upon during the course of normal gameplay. It's just going to be a helpful in the end game. And honestly, it will probably render Drowsy slash Hypno fairly irrelevant for the end game. But well, I guess we'll wait until we get there. A Whooper, you say? This seems level 20, too, I just realized. So this might be... It's somewhat difficult if he's got good water moves and doesn't get confused. Thankfully, he is punching himself. So I think we'll go ahead... We'll go ahead and burninate him, too. Why not? Yes, you can burn water types. It's very hot water, apparently. I don't know. That actually is a move in later generations, too, with Scald. Actually, I want to say Scald was introduced in this generation. I don't know that for certain, but... Uh, it is a very interesting move. It's a water type move with a chance to burn. And you might be wondering, well, what use does that have, really? Why not just use a better water move like Surf or something? Well, it's actually got a lot of power behind it, too. So even if it doesn't burn, it leaves a pretty big mark on whatever you're throwing it at. Now, I'm hoping he's confused one more time. Yep, perfect. And then the burn will kill him. Look at that. Full experience off of a level 20 Wooper for my level 18 Vulpix. That'll be a guaranteed level up, I imagine. Only 222 experience? That's... And that's a trained one? Man, that's... Not good. Man. Oh well. Anyway, so Vulpix learns Flamethrower, by the way, at level 24. So that's not too far from now. And that sounds amazing, because, let's be honest, uh, Flamethrower is an amazing move. Probably the best fire move in the game, if you ask me. Simply because it's got perfect accuracy and a lot of power behind it. Not perfect accuracy, I guess it can miss, but the odds of it missing are substantially lower than something like Fire Blast. A Flaffy, huh? This should be worth a decent chunk of XP, I imagine. Considering it is actually evolved. Partially. It's not fully evolved, but it is more evolved than Mareep, obviously. I'm liking these confusion hits. This doesn't normally happen for me. And again, I'm very much looking forward to the day when I don't have to rely on status to kill people with Vulpix, but Flamethrower on this thing is going to be an absolute beast. Thunder Wave, great. Love that. Probably for the best, honestly, because I was going to get quick attacked as soon as I... Uh, or I was going to get paralyzed, rather, as soon as I landed quick attack. Simply because uh, it's got static. And static is annoying. Alright, that's not nice. That's a critical? Good lord, come on. Uh, let's try the Confuse Ray one more time and see if that makes a slightly better difference here. Flaffy, unfortunately, has a halfway decent amount of special attack behind it. So that Thundershock does a pretty decent chunk of damage. It is still burned, though, ever so that's, been, that's nice. Alright, let's see if we can. I have... I might just get rid of Tail Whip as soon as I get a chance to here. It's not really doing me a whole lot of good in the long run, so to speak. Yay, Thundershock, I love it. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to when my team actually has halfway decent moves and can reliably kill things on their own and doesn't have to rely on status moves. Uh, thankfully, we kind of got Ekans there with now that he's got a good move in Bite. And I also looked up and found that uh, Arbok learns Crunch very, very quickly. So that's really cool. I think Quick Attack still goes first, even when I'm paralyzed, but just in case. Let's go ahead and heal up here a little bit. Um, I think what I'm going to do is take some time off screen and go buy some more water and get people trained up in the meantime. I mean, I'll... What? It's got Moo Moo Milk. Uh, Moo Moo Milk, by the way, if you weren't aware, is arguably the best uh, HP restoring item in the game. Simply because it, it, it restores 100 HP, and it's usually pretty cheap to buy, although it's difficult to get. I don't think there's any, like, mainstream way of buying it outright. I think you can buy it from a little mill tank farm up here, but, like, one at a time or something. Kind of like from a vending machine. Uh, in Generation 6, you could buy Moo Moo Milk in, like, dozens at a time. And that was incredibly useful, because 100 HP, it's like, well, that's not as good as a Hyper Potion. Yeah, but it's a lot cheaper than a Hyper Potion. And a lot of times, Hyper Potions I find are overkill. You generally don't need 200 points restored all the time. You generally need a bit less than that. Like, half of that, so to speak. Alright, this thing will die very quickly here, I hope. I can handle one more Thundershock, if I'm not mistaken. Just in case I can't, though. We're gonna go ahead and Confuserate this thing. Alright, so yeah, upon reflection, I'm definitely glad we have Heracross, definitely glad we have Vulpix. Both of them are going to be uh, staples for the team. And by that I mean, of course, being permanent members. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to go with for, like, some more members. I do know... Oh, Psyduck, I don't want to fight that. It's going to get wrecked immediately, so we're just going to switch out to something else. We'll go Bayleaf. Bayleaf could do with some, some experience points, I imagine. Um, there is something I want to grab when we get much later in the game, because I have an idea of what I want to do with it. But it's not going to be until, like, after the seventh gym. So, long time from now, but that'll be incredibly valuable for the Elite Four in the end game. And I'll let you guys know what that is when we get there. Some of you might have already guessed, simply because there's not really a lot to catch after the seventh gym, before the Elite Four, but... I see. So you, whenever you see someone say, I see, so you do battle that way, it means they want your phone number. Uh, let me get your phone. I don't think this chick gives me anything, so we're going to go ahead and say no. It's all for free, she says. All right, we're going to run home and heal up real quick. I feel like, uh-oh, that music means we have encountered one of the legendary beasts. Yeah, I, have, I had the music memorized. You know, 1v1 me, bro. Uh, let's see here. So, here's the thing with Raikou and Entei, and I believe I explained this already. They're going to run the first chance they get. They always will. Uh, thankfully, there there was a bug in previous generations where if you tried to use Mean Look to prevent them from running or something like that, and they used Roar to escape, they would never show up again. They would be gone for good. And thankfully, I believe that bug no longer exists in this generation. I think. I don't know for certain, but thankfully I don't have anybody with Mean Look anyway, so it's kind of a moot point. Uh, but that being said, we're going to try to YOLO ball this thing, and believe me, this has worked for me in the past. I know it sounds insane, and I've only got one fastball, but I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. And it'd be hilarious if I caught a level 40 Raikou before my first member of my team is level 20. I guess I got one level 20, don't I? But anyway, uh, I could attempt to land a move in this thing, but it's way too fast. It's going to go outspeed me for sure. So we're just going to whip a fastball at it and see how this goes. And Raikou is fairly fast. Like 115 base speed, I think. Nope, and shook once. But anyway, so it's going to run away. Uh, we have encountered Raikou now, and that means I can use the Pokedex to track it. If I were interested in actually capturing the thing, right now it's kind of a moot point. I don't have anything built to deal with it, so... Or anything anywhere near level enough to deal with it. So, yeah, the fact that I got even one shake on that YOLO ball was pretty funny. Again, I have actually successfully done that before. It was back in the original uh, Gold and Silver. I, one sh I threw one fast ball at Raikou and caught it immediately. Without any HP loss or any status effects or anything. It was pretty funny. I had a good time. 
All right, so we got our restored back to full here. And that being said, we're going to do a little more grinding and hopefully uh, maybe not necessarily run into more legendaries, but you never know. It could happen. But we'll do some more of that in the next episode. So like I said before, thank you all very much for joining me up to this point. I really do appreciate it. We're going to do some more of, what is that, Route 39, I think, that way? Maybe? 38. Route 38. We're going to go back that way toward Olivine and do some more training. Maybe grab some Moo Moo Milk. That'd be nice. But we'll do that next time. So until then, thank you for watching. This has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.